Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. But this is the reality of everything. There's very small slots for all of this, for all of this stuff that everyone's going for. Everyone's not going to get there because there is no actual equality. There should be equality in, t when in the eyes of the law. That's where people should be equal and the same. Everything else, you've got to, in order to get something, you've got to sacrifice. I always tell people, you have to be willing to give up everything you want, mm -hmm. everything you have to get everything you want. So Martin you had, go ahead. also, yeah, Martin Luther King said that also, but um, we also have to remember that um, all this craziness, um, mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, it's human rights, not just American rights. It's an American issue, but mm -hmm. it's all about human rights yeah. across the board. Yeah, you know? that's the thing I'm cool with with the whole world, the whole world having. Like these rights that we're talking about here in America, you people could call it whatever they want. It doesn't matter to me. Everyone should be equal in every country in the eyes of the law, right? Yep. You know, this is the thing. Everyone should have the right to defend themselves. You know, mm -hmm. everyone should have the right. If they want to, they should be able to go out there and start businesses and work hard and not have kids or, you know, wind up getting divorced because they're trying to go after this thing. And then now, now they built it and they shouldn't have to give you everything because they gave up everything so that they could become a millionaire. They shouldn't have to give you every single penny that they make. They should be able to enjoy that because they made the choice that while you were home with your, which there's nothing wrong with it. You're, you decided one person over here decided to raise a family, which is freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. And this person decided to go out here and do this thing. You know, we just have to, we have to come to this realization in the world that we are not all the same. We're not all equal. We don't want the same things, but we should be treating, treated that way. And we should be treated that way in terms of the, the eyes of the law. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's right. funny, kind of on that same token, it's also kind of that sometimes that I think that makes people feel so bad. So I don't know if you guys watched the other day, Maj had a live and mm -hmm. he kind of went on a rant okay. and I understand where he's coming from because I've heard this frustration from a lot of people. And he was talking about how pretty much if certain things don't change by 2021, he doesn't necessarily want to do Black Lives Matter anymore mm. or he doesn't want to make it. The focus of everything he wants to kind of move on and like buy his own land and live off the land and kind of live his own life and do things that way i understand because that. but he's kind of saying it in the fact of he sees different movements obviously maj he's a confident guy his movement is a very worthy movement mm -hmm. i think it's great but i think he's starting to it was kind of a strange video to see from him because maj maj seems like the energizer bunny it seems like nothing ever phases him so this was kind of the first time I've ever seen him kind of almost be like, ah, oh, man, the grind is like becoming a lot. Yeah. Like is, is the grind, is the grind worth it? And mm -hmm. he was kind of using the example of there are so many stupid causes that exist in the world that people pump millions and billions of dollars into, uh, and they amount to nothing and they're irrelevant. And his cause, even though he's done so well, he, he used the example of, you see people that have gotten like canceled and they open a GoFundMe page and they get like hundreds of thousands of dollars from like the gun community or the freedom community. But for black lives matter, it's like he has to fight for every $10,000 and that's making an impact. Mm -hmm. Whereas some, something else might just be kind of something stupid. And I was like, I understand that frustration. So it's kind of like what you said, mm -hmm. it, there's nothing you can do about the free market of ideas, but I can understand how a lot of people, they kind of see, people wasting their time on irrelevant things when there are actual good causes in the world that need something to be done. And nobody is willing to put any effort into them, not even a dollar, mm -hmm. not even zero effort. It's not even their money. Yeah. And, and I can understand that that's frustrating and we see it more on the internet nowadays. So it kind of amplifies, we get to see every negative thing that happens. And it makes you think that the world is much worse than it might necessarily be. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I didn't see that live. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it actually sounds interesting. I think that Maj, my interpretation of him, he one of the things that makes him cool is that he thinks out loud all the time. I, yeah. do, I do that same thing, too. <laughs> so when no, you, when you, you do, do it in a different way. <laughs> you do it in a different way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, we don't do it in the same way. Um, and, and I'm not saying, like, you know, his way might be uh, better than mine. Who knows, right? 
but Everybody's I think different, man. yeah, I think he does think out loud, and I think that's a good thing, right? I think you yeah. run in you run into trouble when you when you think out loud like that. But I think it's a good thing, right? I want to know people who I'm dealing with. I prefer just that uh, you know that uh, that zeitgeist of what they. I don't want them to second guess what's going through their mind because I want to be able to talk about that. But I think it does come back to there only being so many slots. I don't think he's the only person. I saw someone else on social media expressing their frustration, and this is ironic. Um, I think it was um, Edgar from um, Guns for Everyone was saying, um, as a Latino, he feels that all the spots in the, and, and I'm paraphrasing him, okay? So, he, but he feels like as a Latino, in the gun community, all the spots went to the black dudes, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so there's no spots for the Latinos, paraphrasing what mm -hmm. he said. We can always get him to come back on and say his thing. The reality of this is <laughs> there's not a lot of spots. <laughs> well, and I, and I there's not a lot of spots for anyone. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say, like, um, even when you go back and you look at it, um, even with Maj's um, rant the other day, I think what it comes down to is he's frustrated because how many times can you say the message? Mm -hmm. People are, yeah, 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 but then they don't react until it affects them at that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to prepare for what's going to take place. So, for instance, me doing all this training and competition shooting, right? Now, if war was to happen here on America, are the people going to pick up arms and defend their property, defend themselves, defend life, right? But the time you don't learn how to shoot is when people are jumping out of planes and airplanes are going overhead, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, not, it's not an overnight fix, but you need to prepare, you know, for the what's coming, the what if moment. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I think uh, I, I heard a little bit of Edgar's podcast last night. Mm -hmm. We checked it out. So I didn't hear the first what you had mentioned specifically. Mm -hmm. But he kind of said that um, he never wanted to approach being I'm paraphrasing again what he said, like, I'm I'm the Mexican guy in the gun community. Mm -hmm. Like he just wanted to be like, I'm guns for everyone. This is what we do. We train a lot of people mm -hmm. regardless of who I am and everything like that. And then he mentioned he kind of started experimenting with, let me identify as I'm the Mexican gun trainer. Mm -hmm. And he said he started getting more positive feedback on social media by doing that. And it kind of frustrated him because it's like, it's it's kind of BS that I- You don't want to be pigeonholed. Never, was, yeah, yeah. I, or I mm -hmm. just, that's never, I, I feel like I don't have to use that. And, and I've heard the frustration. I mean, you hear the frustration too from women in the gun industry. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be judged on my own merits, not because people think I'm attractive. I mm -hmm. hear that from from a lot of women who in the gun industry, too. But I think sometimes it's like you have to weigh what is your goal? What is your goal? In mm -hmm. Edgar's case, you want to expand the cause of of, you know, uh, gun training. You want more people to own guns, whatever you have to do to expand that goal. Sometimes you got to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to think like that. Look, I'm the Puerto Rican pistolero. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of being Puerto Rican. But I also know that name will be like other people. There aren't necessarily that many Puerto Rican gun owners that are out there in the open. Mm -hmm. So people might see it. Might it pigeonhole me? I don't think so. I think that I, 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 I have my own success on my own merits. But if it makes other people say, oh, here's a Hispanic dude that, uh, that's into guns and they wouldn't have been before, if I hadn't done that, I'll take it. That's mm -hmm. my goal. I want more people to be in the gun community regardless of who they are. And if uh, you saying where I'm from helps that, I'll take it. You know, yeah. It's fine by me. It's all about the cause at the end of the day. Right. Um, I think a lot of things in life can fall into perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's how you look at it and how other people look at it. And I think when you do anything, so regardless of, of what it is that we're doing, Mike's competition shooter, you know, I'm, I'm a YouTuber. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you guys uh, pin yourselves as activists. Whatever yeah. it is we're doing here in this community, we're seeing it, it from our aspect, and that's one thing. Like, what is it we want? What are we trying to get out of this? And then there's uh, how other people are seeing it and what's happening out there. I think uh, there's there's one of the things that happens is when you create stuff, ultimately, and I say this over and over again, if you're doing this, people out there are making a choice. You're creating something. If you're if you're making a car 
you're designing this car on what you think people want out of a car and what colors and features and stuff like that. And then you're putting it into the market. And there's certain things you could do marketing wise and tricks and all games and stuff like that that you could play. But ultimately, folks out there go, yeah, I'm going to buy this car. And, and the people out there choose this over that. So for me as like a YouTuber, I can make the videos all I want to. When I put it out there, people choose to look at it or don't choose to look at it. And when it comes to now like the industry, I think it's the same kind of thing. Often what happens is that when the industry is looking at things, so let's say in the, in the, in the aspect of race, if there's folks out there in the industry and they're like, look, we there's a lot of women coming into the you know, to buy into the market and buying stuff. There's a lot of black people, a lot of Latinos. And they're like, okay, we want to get all the Latinos to buy our stuff. They're the ones who choose. There might be five Latinos out there. There might be 10. Ultimately, the companies are going to choose. And they mostly choose based on who the people are choosing. They're going to mm -hmm. go with popularity. You know, not all of those, most of those companies won't sit there and say, let's take time. Let's look at this guy. Let's figure out what he has to say, how he says it, does that fit with us? Can we have a long relationship with him? You know, this might take years for, for this all to grow into something. Okay, we like this guy. He's not the biggest. Let's go with That's not what's going to happen. They're going to look at someone and go, no, we want that guy because everyone likes that guy. And so that's the thing that would ha that's going to happen to you if you're a Latino, if you're a black guy. I think that's kind of like what's happening to Maj, right? that he's frustrated because the industry is not necessarily getting behind. They do think he's cool. I think he's one of the coolest people doing this. But at the end of the day, you know, they're making these choices because they're not real about this. You know, being real about it, it's, it's, it's years. They have to sit there and, and look at it and go, it might take us 20 years before we get there with this guy. Can we actually do this? That's what Glock did with Gunny. How many years was Gunny representing Glock? When I think about Glock, I still think Gunny, right? But they were in that, and that was a commitment they made, and it went for a long time. But it's, it's really tough, I think, for a lot of companies to do that, and I could see how that's going to get frustrating mm -hmm. because, you know, everyone is just trying to win. If you're, if you're at that company, you might be an executive at that company for a year, and if you don't perform, you're out. Yep. And this is ultimately what they all think about. And now this situation that we're going through now compounds everything in this way. These mofos don't have to do anything to sell their guns or their ammo <laughs> or <laughs> whatever it is they're making. Yep. They don't have to know you. <laughs> You know, this is what's hap this is what's happening right now. So because they don't have to they don't have to deal with you, you're gonna realize not all companies, I think a lot of companies are, you know, the people who understand the long term, like what I'm saying to you, they're gonna be out there supporting us and not judging you because you're not this big or whatever it is. But but a lot of companies out there, man, are just going to go, I just want to stack that money. I don't have to do any kind of marketing. I don't have to try to please anyone. Everyone's coming into the store and buying everything so I could give two craps about any of this kind of stuff. And that gets frustrating. And if you are that, if you're that person, if you're Marge or if you're Edgar or anyone else out there and you're looking at it, you think to yourself, what kind of future do I have in this? Mm -hmm. Where is this going to go? Am I going to burn five years, 10 years, 20 years out of my life doing this? And at the end, um, what's going to be there? The reason why I know that is I have those conversations with my wife very frequently. Oh, yeah. You know, she's like, dude, you could rock and roll any in anything that you want to do. This gun thing is really tough. There's. There's like, you know, it, it's a dog eat dog world. There's no respect. There's, there's a lot, it's a lot of crap going on. And I would really tell people, I'm not trying to excuse anyone. This does in some cases have a little bit to do with race and all that kind of stuff or gender or whatever. Mostly about 95% of this is just money. Yep. yep. That's what it all comes down <laughs> to. It yeah. always comes to the dollar. Yeah, exactly. And so you really have to be in this, like Mike was saying, Mike, that's why you're doing this, right? It would be awesome if you just blew up and you were like, you know, the Tiger Woods of the gun world. 
But really and truly, you're doing it because you enjoy it. It belongs to you. So mm-hmm. that's why you're doing it, you know, and, and everyone has to decide where are they on that scale. Because as you start to scale that up, you know, and even if you do become that guy who everyone wants, that might be temporary. Next thing you know, here's the other guy, yep. you know, mm-hmm. um, and it really comes down to how committed you are. A perfect example of this to me right now in our, in our gun world is Coleon Noir. Before the NRA came along, he was incredibly popular. When I started doing this, my brother said there's only there's two people my brother showed me when he was trying to convince me to do this. Coleo Noir, Argo J. That's it. He was like, there's only these two dudes. Right? And and Coleon was very, very, very popular, but not NRA popular. Right? So then he started dealing with the NRA and that kind of like blew him up. You know, and but it, it was it was a once again, I think it was a good choice on their part. They chose the right person. He was very passionate about what he was doing. He, he just hit so many demographics. Right. And, and it worked really well. And then it just all fell apart. <laughs> but hmm. what's he doing? He's still doing it. He's still doing it. Yep. Right. He's still doing it without their support. He's still doing it. And we're talking about a guy who's a lawyer who could easily go out there and make millions of dollars and we never see him ever again, right? But he's still out there doing it because at the end of the day, in his heart, that passion is still there. And that's the, the reason why I know that, that's the conversation I have with my wife. She's like, why are you do? I've got friends, I've got people who keep offering me business deals. They're like, why don't you come and go, why are you doing this? You know, why don't we go into business together and do this thing? And I'm like, dude, because this fire is still in my heart. I'm the one who has to judge when it goes out. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I can't, you know, I'm going to go off and do something else. I have to make that choice. And I think ultimately that's what it comes down to. And, you know, I can understand that from, from Marja's perspective. You know, he's, he's really a person who is a hustler in like the greatest of ways. He really could be anything. And how mm-hmm. much energy should he burn here when we're not really helping him? Yeah. I think he said he wanted to go into acting. <laughs> Actually. So yeah. That's a passion of his that he'd like to go uh, uh, towards. He's like, yeah. that's what I would be doing if I wasn't doing this. So. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's something that we all have to face, right? We all have to face this thing. We all have to think about it. And it's it's like I'm not trying to blame anyone out there. Like Every human being has to go through this because ultimately at the end of the day, there's a finite amount of slot. Mm-hmm. OK, so we can we could print all the money we want to print, but we really cannot print those slots, those positions that exist in life. There's sometimes only sometimes it's. Go ahead. It's like sometimes it's timing too. Yeah. Sometimes you hit the market at the right time. Sometimes you're ahead of your time. Sometimes you're behind the curve. Yeah, we're and seeing that's it. Just we're, how it is. We're seeing it now with YouTube. It's the reason why every single celebrity and their mother is now on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Why? Why? What happened recently? And they can't go out and film. Yeah. So <laughs> COVID nineteen. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they they it's something that they all created and all ginned up. But because it because they can't uh, go do a comedy, they can't do a comedy show. Their movies aren't coming out in the theaters anymore. They're not making the movies. They're not doing TV shows. They're not doing all this stuff. Everyone, every single one is on YouTube. Now it's changing the whole dynamic because ultimately there's only so many spots. And what they were noticing is that all these people who are not in movies. They're making money and I'm staying home. Yep. And there's no money coming in. I can't pay the tax on my multi-million dollar mansion. You know what? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start making some YouTube videos. <laughs> yep. Right? And they're not. And they're not all actually being successful with it. No, I think they're they're seeing that's a lot harder than they thought. And mm-hmm. you're seeing. I think a lot of actors and actresses are actually exposing themselves now because mm-hmm. the younger generation now is used to YouTube celebrities and content creators. Mm-hmm. And so now these celebrities come here and it's like, well, your content's garbage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you don't have millions of dollars behind you, you can't produce anything. Yeah. It's basically a lot of them are like exposing themselves to that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah.
Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.